Hello everyone. I'm calling from an exciting place today, Windy Wellington, where Sri Lanka have completed a wonderful win. At the halfway point, we thought they were far behind, uh, looking to chase 310 that England had made. We thought they'd conceded 30, 40 runs more. I still stand by that. They could have made life so much easier if they had fielded better. I keep telling you, the area Sri Lanka need to work on is the fielding. Understandable, there are not many uh, athletic fielders out there. The few youngsters who are in that team need to up it and make a difference. Dilshan put one down. Chandimal put one down. Myla Jayavardhana put down the most costly one of Joe Root when he was on to went on to make 122 and uh, helped England to that massive score. Yes, the bowling looked out of order, but I wouldn't look that deep. If I was Marvin Natapattu, I would keep telling them that they are doing their job. The bottom line is they're creating chances. We're not holding on to them. And come the death overs, we're, not, we're seeing a lot of good attacks. England taken apart. Australia taken apart. South Africa taken apart. It's difficult to defend with the field restrictions and a ball that's giving you nothing. Batsmen can target you. Once you play yourself in, you are going to concede runs. The way to restrict batsmen in the death overs is not by totally f focusing on your lines. I mean, not to expect them to be perfect, but pick up early wickets and get into a posi uh, position from where you're bowling at the tailenders or lesser batsmen. Sri Lanka had thoughts looking at the pitch. It looked similar to the pitch uh, that New Zealand beat England on. It was the same pitch, but looked much drier. It's a week on since that game. And also, very similar to the pitch Sri Lanka played New Zealand on the 29th of January. The Pacers did well, hence to bring in an extra spinner was thought about, but opted to stick to the same team um, of the uh, same team that beat Bangladesh a few days ago. In hindsight, maybe there could have been changes, but I thought the right decision. Angelo Matthews, as usual, I thought losing the toss is always good. Rather than trying to rack your mind in what to do, Losing the toss was the best way forward and um, England winning the toss opted to bat. Off to a flyer because Sri Lanka, a little bit loose, but the chances were there. Ian Bell was the aggressor. He was dropped twice in Lakmal's second over, which went for 19. He'd taken those catches, different game. 61 off 9, Sri Lanka took the pace off. Matthews and Dilshan bowled really well. Gradually, England, milking the bowlers, played Herat well. They um, uh, got four got 28 runs off his first four overs with put pressure on the left armour. But Sri Lanka kept sticking to their task. They picked up in the fielding from that moment on and looked like they'll restrict England to a score around 280, which looked power on that pitch. But in the death overs, again, you know, very difficult to restrict. And Tissera Pereira conceded 25 runs uh, in one of those overs, 45th over, if I remember right. But if you look at the lines and the lengths, the feel he had, I thought he bowled well. He did what was expected of him. It was just quality batting and the point that I uh, made earlier. Batsman can get into you. I feel for Tisera Pereira in that situation. Tried the Yorkers. He tried different angles. He did execute them well, but batsman can line you up. That's uh, uh, the sad part when you look at it from a bowler's angle. Sri Lanka needed a good start. As we know, when you're chasing a big score, England had four fast bowlers, which meant you see the new ball off it gets much easier to control a, a bowling unit like England. And as expected, the short pitch bowling was what their ploy was. You just get the feeling that they think that the Sri Lankans from the subcontinent do not play the short ball well. Hence, they look to bowl short, a lot of short balls. And I've seen it over the last few years as well when Sri Lanka and England, they did the same ploy, not coming in with a plan B. Maybe they can't because of the combination they have and Sri Lanka cashed in. Decent start, Dilshan and Tirimana. Tirimana was superb from the word go. Scratchy against Bangladesh, but today, really good. 100 with Dilshan. Then Sangakara got the opportunity to come in with a good foundation and also the opportunity to play himself in with Tirimana playing as well as he did. Once Sangakara was in, there was no stopping anyone. Sri Lanka started raking up the runs. Got to a quicker standard, bettering his effort uh, a couple of days ago and kept going. Big win for Sri Lanka because Tirimana has stood up. He's put his hand up. He's made a big 100 and taken Sri Lanka home. Taken the pressure off Sangakara. Now going forward, a lot to play for. Areas to look at is the fielding. You need to pick up those half chances to be a real force. 
and be a threat in, in this World Cup. Bowling, encourage them. Do not put pressure on them. They can do a job, the Sri Lankan bowlers. The only issue is being Rangana Herath, who's got three stitches on his spinning finger. So I suspect that's the end of his World Cup. So Sachitra Senanayake is the option uh, to come in. So you'll see him have an extended run and hopefully he bowls a little quicker through the air than what we've seen him do in the uh, New Zealand series. Australia next up in Sydney. It's going to be an exciting prospect. Sri Lanka have now basically, in my opinion, have sealed their place in the quarterfinals and probably third play Australia to finish second and avoid the two strong teams, the two powerful teams uh, uh, from the other group, which is South Africa and India. So that's it from Wellington. It's been a great day, a great chase for Sri Lanka. But a lot of work ahead. They have to show a lot more energy in the field. But exciting times. It's getting better and better as it goes on. See you next time from Sydney. This is Russell Arnold for the Papare.com.